Allora io direi ehm, che passiamo subito la linea a Lucia così lei ci descrive il caso e Gianni magari può già iniziare la faco così eh, procediamo. Va bene Vincenzo? Va tutto bene, eh, ti ho perso un attimo perché parlavo con Rita. Che dobbiamo fare? Allora, eh, come ha detto Enzo, la differenza, questo paziente si differenzia dagli altri perché cominciamo con la cataratta, quindi cataratta più the MEC. Il paziente quindi ha la FUX, tutti e due gli occhi, l'occhio che stiamo operando è l'occhio sinistro, mentre l'occhio destro ha ricevuto già una the SEC qualche anno fa. Questa è l'immagine alla lampada fessura. Vai avanti. Vai avanti. Questa è il test alla fluescina per mostrare appunto l'epitelepatia dovuta alla sofferenza endoteliale. Vai avanti. Questo è l'altro occhio. Ok, ora passiamo la linea al professor Alessio. Dare? Mi sente nessuno? Vado? Io vado, eh? poi non mi dite. Sì, eh, Gianni. Sì, eccomi. Ascolta, nei eh, 25 secondi in cui tu farai la FACO, sì. noi eh, facciamo intanto una relazione. Te che dici? Oh, perfetto. D'accordo? Perfetto, allora guardate Gianni eh. e lui procede. Allora, Dopo. chiamerei Mark Terry. The dark side of the back. Application and how to avoid them. Good afternoon, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, once again Enzo for inviting me to this fabulous conference. Every year I come, it's just wonderful. I'd like to talk to you about uh, uh, the dark side of Demec. Uh, we saw, have seen a little of the dark side on each of our surgeries. I have no disclosures relevant to this talk. Uh, the advantages of Demec are well known, better vision, uh, faster visual recovery, less steroids, no IOP problems, and less rejection rate than Desaic or PK. But there is a dark side to Demec. Let me show you the misadventures in Demec surgery. This is a case I, I dug up from uh, my, this is my second case I ever did. And you see, I had the same problem I had yesterday, the tissue stuck in the wound. Now, I was trying to use the sake technique of irrigating the tissue into the eye. And look what happens. Now in slow motion, so you can feel my pain. So this is the second Demec I ever did, and I almost never wanted to do another one. Uh, but the point I'm showing you here is that we can learn from problems we encounter. A problem is discouraging, but we can learn from that. And what I learned from this is that you cannot take the skills that you learned in the SAIC and apply them to Demec. You have to have another skill set. And so one of the important aspects in Demec, that's the dark side, is the tissue will always follow the fluid waves. If you try and irrigate the tissue out of the wound, and you're opening the wound at the same time, you're going to have the tissue shoot out, as you saw in that, in that case there. A better solution is to have the chamber very shallow and to take a forceps and either insert the tissue and open the wound at the same time, or to take an intraocular forceps and open the wound and pull the tissue. Remember, the tissue will always follow the fluid waves. Now, the dark side of Demec involves known complications that present in a unique way and unique complications that you didn't think really were possible. But let's look at the intraoperative dark side. You saw one of the examples of the intraoperative dark side. And um, there, is, uh, uh, there are other aspects as well. I don't have the video on here, but uh, one of the aspects of the dark side is that if you make the incision larger than your injector, And what will happen is, if you inject the tissue, it can go into the anterior chamber, then out along the, in, along the side of your injector. And we don't see that happening with, uh, with the sake, the sec. We do see it happen with Demec. So you have to be very careful on the size of your incision, because the dark side of Demec is that the tissue will go around your injector if it's larger than your injector. You can have pupil size problems, and you can have trouble unfolding and centering the donor tissue. 
due to fibrin formation. We saw a little bit of that on, on one of the first cases at the conference where blood was in the anterior chamber, making the holding the tissue very difficult. One other aspect of the dark side of Demec is that there is more endothelial damage to your tissue when you receive it than there is with DISSEC. The microkeratome passing across the donor cornea causes very little endothelial damage, whereas pre-stripping or stripping the tissue interoperatively causes more damage to the endothelium. Another aspect is to realize that we'd like to have a small pupil, but when we're doing triple procedures, we don't like to have a small pupil because it's more difficult to cataract surgery. Our solution to that has been to use uh, uh, ephedrine or um, uh, uh, neosinephrine or whatever uh, uh, topical uh, uh, epinephrine to dilate the pupil and not use any cycloplegics at all. And the vast majority of the time, the pupil will stay at about six millimeters to allow you time to do your cataract surgery. And then when you use your acetylcholine to constrict the pupil, you can get a very tight, small pupil. If you use cycloplegics prior to your cataract surgery, you may have a more difficult time getting the pupil small. Not always, but sometimes. If you run into a situation like this interoperatively, you might be advised to put epinephrine into the anterior chamber to, to make the pupil larger so you can finish your cataract surgery safely. Now, fibrin strands in the recipient anterior chamber can cause tremendous trouble opening up the graft. We've only had six cases at DEVRS out of now 600 cases where we've had fibrin strands that have occurred without bleeding in the anterior chamber. Bleeding in the anterior chamber can give you a lot of fibrin, but even without bleeding, you can sometimes get a fibrin accumulation in the anterior chamber. And it doesn't seem to be in relationship to the peripheral iridectomy creation. It may be related to an allergy to the myocol or some other uh, solution you put in the eye. But when you do have fiber create in the anterior chamber, you can have a great difficult, a, a degree of difficulty in unfolding the graft. And here you can see that there's fibrin there, and my graft unfolding was not complete. I have a, a D-shaped graft. And nonetheless, the patient did quite well. But it's very frustrating, especially if you're spending over 30 minutes trying to unfold your graft. And it's all due to the fibrin. Our solution to that problem is prior to putting the tissue inside the eye, we go with an IA tip, and we then evacuate the anterior chamber and make sure that there's no fiber in the anterior chamber. And if there is, you can evacuate it quickly with the IA and then quickly get your graft in, and it gives you a few more minutes of getting your graft unfolded, which is often all you need. Postoperatively, there's a dark side to Demec as well. Graft separation issues is the one most encountered. Full separations come from upside down grafts. I have not seen a graft be completely free floating in the anterior chamber unless it was upside down. And now that we have an S stamp and we have other methods, confocal, uh, we don't get upside down grafts. Partial separation is very common. If it's more than 30%, we rebubble. And rebubbling is easy at the slit lamp. Let me show you a video where we make rebubbling so easy it doesn't interfere with your clinic. I'll show you, uh, well, once again, graft separation total only when it's upside down. We have had a case where we had a patient that was lost to follow-up. We saw her at one day, it looked good. She didn't come back at a week. She had some health problems, she didn't come back for six months. And what you can see here is that the entire temporal side of her graft had separated and had become, become adhe adherent. And even though she had this terrible looking OCT, the entire cornea was clear because it filled in with endothelium from the graft and from the recipient, and her vision was quite good. And her vision was quite good. Video going for you. Yes. So here's a novel technique. We presented ASCRS where you can easily do this. Now, we take, simply take a cannula, attach it to a um, syringe. Now, the syringe is attached via an extension tubing. So this IV extension tubing allows you now to use two hands at the slit lamp to do the rebubbling and also have exquisite focusing. Because you can see right here that I've got the syringe in my right hand and the joystick, and I have complete control of the cannula with my other hand resting on her eye, on her um, uh, cheek. And I can completely control the slit lamp, the syringe, and the cannula. And we enter through the inferior paracentesis. I give it one, two, three, and we do it. Here's what the patient says. Here's what the patient 
That didn't cost me very much money to have her say that. <laughs> it truly was. It's, 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 it's amazing. We don't, we don't go to the minor operating room anymore. We do this at the slit lamp. And when it's set up, it's, it's very quick and easy, and the patients really like it. So you can have rebubbles that are more frequent than desig, but you end up having um, uh, an easy time of doing it. Sigmoid block is one of the most feared complications of uh, DMEC. This is a case of pupillary block at day one, but I want to show you that peripheral redectomies are important to me because this peripheral redectomy I made down here uh, prevented the patient from having a terrible problem. She had 350 degrees of angle closure, but the 10 degrees that was open was right here, and the pressure was only 18. What had happened was the, the air bubble had gone behind the pupil and caused reverse pupillary block. But we simply released the, uh, dilated the pupil, it came forward, and it was released. This is an interesting case of pupillary block where this patient was perfect on day one, on day two, on day three. But then when he started to absorb his gas bubble, it got small enough that when he went to the movie theater and his pupil dilated, the gas bubble passed through the pupil, and when he came out, the constriction occurred, and he got also reverse pupillary block. We took, him, uh, we took him to the clinic and we removed some of the gas and he did fine. But it happened on day four, so there can be problems if the patients say, I have severe pain, you must listen to them. The other aspect of the dark side of the mech is that you can get iris issues, posterior synechia formation, when you have prolonged contact of air or gas with an inactive small pupil. So you do want to dilate your pupils postoperatively, and you also do not want to use pilocarpine or myostat, because those constrict the pupil for a long time, and they lead to posterior sneak formation. Usually not visually significant, but not nice to look at. We use myocol or acetylcholine. This is a patient that described a second image. I'd never heard of this before, but the peripheral rejectomy in this phacic patient that we did initially was so large that she had a second image. We closed it with proline sutures and it eliminated her her problems with double image. And then finally, uh, two last cases, a dark sided Demec is an anterior subcapsular cataract. I think we also heard this at this meeting, that the air bubble in a phacic patient can cause an anterior subcapsular cataract, usually not visually significant, but it can be. And then finally, we have the, the fear we always have of infection or epithelial ingrowth. And just like the SEC, you can get these white spots that occur in the interface, and you have to ask, is this candida, most likely organism, or is this epithelium? And you can watch it, or you can go and remove it. And there's a lot of controversy on the best way to treat these type of problems. In summary, then, Demec represents pure anatomic replacement surgery and unprecedented quality of vision for our patients. Like any surgery, there's a dark side that the surgeon must always be on guard against. And certainly as Demec becomes more commonplace, we're always, all of us, going to have unique opportunities to really explore more of the dark side at Demec. I'd like to thank my son Charlie, who's with me at this meeting, my son Nicholas, who was not able to come, and my lovely wife Cindy. I should mention that today is my 28th wedding anniversary today, right today, here in Italy. So I'm very excited that we are in a romantic country to celebrate this. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Vincenzo Morino, cerca di fermare Gianni, eh, di farlo rallentare, eh, se no non vediamo niente. È un freccia rossa Gianni, eh, però come vedete ha completato rossa, in pochissimi minuti la cataratta, ha ristretto la pupilla, ha provveduto a fare un'iridectomia, la decemetoressi senza marcare, ma sembrava assolutamente perfetta. Adesso sta caricando il trapianto che abbiamo preparato prima dell'inizio dell'intervento di 8 mm all'interno dell'iniettore stesso della lente dopo averlo pulito bene dal visco elastico, l'iniettore della Medicel, quello che è stato, ha iniziato una lente della Sifi all'interno dell'occhio, un'azienda tutta italiana e si è rotto da poco. Adesso Gianni sta... Vincenzo, di domandi, mi pare che abbia messo una idrofila, se gli sembra la scelta giusta per una di Mac. Allora, mettiamo, mettiamo. Um, 
Ma basta, basta, non si cazzo. Gian, ah, allora ho sentito. La domanda all'idrofila, Gianni. Aspetta, vai dopo, dopo, ora ah. vediamo questo. Beh, rispondo io brevemente. Io, Gianni, proprio lui ieri ha fatto una domanda circa l'opacizzazione delle lenti e ehm, io l'ho vista dopo vari tipi di lenti, certamente l'ho vista più comunemente nelle idrofile che nelle idrofobe. Okay. Però Gianni Vabbè, ci darà la sua scelta tra un attimo. Adesso sta chiudendo la lente all'interno del lineatore, quello il medice è il lineatore più noto, è utilizzato dalla Zeiss, dalla Sifi, eccetera, eccetera, sono lineatori molto molto buoni e ehm, si prepara a iniettare la lent la, il lenticolo corneale all'interno dell'occhio Andiamo. Ah, del allora, paziente. Eh, vanno L'ideale, secondo me, è effettivamente il materiale idrofilo, il materiale idrofobo, perché non corriamo rischi di opacizzazione della lente. In realtà eh, la quantità di lenti opache dipende un po', come al solito, da noi. Nel senso che quando il paziente viene lasciato, in chi, soprattutto in chirurgia ambulatoriale, con dell'aria per parecchio tempo, eh, ovviamente la lente si tende un po' di più ad opacizzare. Si sta senza acqua. Dell'acqua. Se invece il... Praticamente la spugnetta anteriore non ha mantenuto la, la quantità di acqua desiderata, ma abbiamo perso un pochino, per questo è meglio sempre mettere un tappino di silicone. Ecco qua, l'endotelio comunque mi sembra che lo abbiamo riportato in avanti. Alessandra, dobbiamo allargare un pochino eh, il tunnel, mi devi dare una precalibrata. 3-2. 3-2, questo 3. Così non impazziamo. Ok, che è sempre... Benissimo, allora io vi metto lo CT lì, eh, però non so come, io mi, lo, me lo sono posizionato dove mi servirebbe e stiamo aspettando che il tecnico ci faccia dare quelle immagini bellissime. Eh. Un attimo solo, Antonio Lucio, che stiamo facendo vedere. Vada più giù. Go down, go down with the image. No, no, io non lo posso spostare dal mio pedale, no? In alto e in avanti, o oh, sì? Yeah. Sì, puoi. Ok. Mm. Com'è? Com'è? No, you need to go, go up a little bit because now you're on the iris. Allora, noi abbiamo questo versante che va bene, l'altro no. Gianni, chiudere l'incisione? Mm. Lo vediamo. Gianni vuole vedere prima e poi deciderà se chiudere l'incisione o meno perché al momento sembra completamente watertight adesso ce l'abbiamo arrotolato verso l'alto così 
Perfetto, quindi sembra la posizione perfetta. <ride> per cui la posizione sembra giusta. Sì. Mm? Lo vedete? Con vedete? No, vediamo se con l'OCT, tanto non abbiamo fretta, è l'ultimo credo. No? Go down a little bit with the OCT, down towards the iris. No, 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 no. Not move sideways. Not sideways. So go back on top of this. Go back on top of this. Just there, a bit more. Here. Yeah, that's it. Oh, allora, se... Allora. Benissimo, stop. Possiamo vedere benissimo che la posizione è quella giusta perché sembra rotolarsi... No, Bene. acqua e aria. Vedete l'immagine lì? Siete convinti? Posso andare avanti? L avete l'immagine della CT giù? No, no, down, down, not sideways, no, down, down towards the iris. Eh, that's it. That's it. Ah no, io muovo lo CT mo. Sono all'interno. Vediamo se mi posso aiutare con un piccolo flusso d'acqua. Qui l'ideale sarebbe avere gli aghi di Vincenzo Sarnicola. Facciamo un po' di pubblicità. Che trovo siano una cosa grandiosa. Tu sei pronta con l'aria? abbastanza centrati perfetto c'è una non perfetta coincidenza alle ore 6 cioè il lembo è appena appena alto ma la migrazione delle cellule del lenticolo sicuramente mi lascia tranquillo uh, usualmente uh, diciamo in questi interventi eh, non metto suture però siccome poi il paziente sarà gestito da Vincenzo no, non da me perché io ah, volo domani a Londra sarà gestito da, da Lucia, Lucia. Ah, da Lucia. Da Lucia se volete da che metta il punto la metto se no no va bene, allora, va bene. Allora, vogliamo rifare l'OCT benissimo aspetta totale. che mi sposto qui verso il centro Uh, fermo un attimo solo Lucio ecco. Adesso, lo ecco. vedete? vado un po' più giù ecco qui ancora più su nel nasale mi mette un poco poco più posteriore che sono troppo in corni uh, uh, come si chiama? can you go da down just a moment uh, we are waiting for you Sì, perché qui si vede bene, quando arriviamo lì siamo troppo alti. Adesso va bene, si vede l'endotelio, eh, ci manca verso il tunnel ed è ancora tutto attaccato. Va bene, dalla sala operatoria è tutto. No. Tanto. Bravissimo Gianni. Bravissimo. Grazie caro, grazie. Allora... allora Gianni ha fatto un intervento bellissimo, l'ha concluso rapidissimamente, io penso che sia giunto il momento di salutarci da Pineta Grande, ringrazio Gianni, ringrazio tutti gli infermieri di Pineta Grande, i collaboratori, gli assistenti di Gianni, due che sono venuti ad assisterlo e ehm, a presto a tutti.